Hello my friends, we are back at Six Flags Great Adventure. Fingers crossed about Jersey Devil Coaster possibly testing. They've got made so much progress on that. But at the front of the park, it is a little bit busy today. I should mention that. But I saw that there's a new nano coaster of Superman Ultimate Flight and it does have the pretzel roll on it as well as a new coaster cutout of Nitro, which looks amazing. So as you can see behind me, there's actually bits of green and stuff and like shrubs, they, they really went bananas in the last few weeks. I know if you've been keeping up with this, they posted on Twitter and on Instagram, the updates. They even did a video recently, but there's at least two trains here in storage. And I actually see people up by the entrance. They put up the entrance sign too. So there's a lot here to look at and just kind of document. Oh man, I wonder, when do you think this is going to open? I, I was guessing that they were aiming for Memorial Weekend, but would probably not make it. I don't know how certification works at all. If any of you guys have some insight on that, let me know. So like I said, at the start here, it's taken shape. Look at this. I'm guessing that they're going to be keeping this pathway here. But now, as you can see, we'll try to zoom in a little bit, even though I'm not on my zoom lens. They actually have a sign up. And there are some people standing right in front of it. I wonder if this area is accessible and I just didn't know. I have a feeling though, if it was accessible, there'd be a lot more people. It looks like the first Q house, this building right here, is already built. And back behind the bathrooms, which are no longer visible to me, because they've added all these trees and, and bushes and all of this. Huh. I'm impressed how quickly they moved on this. But yeah, the first queue house is open. There's a second queue house somewhere back there that I think I can see somewhere from Congo Rapids. So I'm gonna walk around and try to see that. I wanted to get a nice little close up of the ride sign here. I'm surprised that it's so close to the actual coaster, but I wonder if you're just making a quick right there and then going into the queue houses and then circling back. And then I also wonder if it's gonna serve as an exit as well because of these ramps that are here, that go up to the station. That's gonna be my guess, but all right. Let's go get another angle of this. Came a little bit closer to the kids area here on the bridge. I noticed that there's a lot of bamboo that's been freshly planted. So that's gonna help, I guess, distinguish the areas. And then just another look here at the right sign. Here's a little better context for where the bamboo is. It's all around this area that juts up to uh, those dining locations that are there and then just a wider angle view of what they've got going on here it's impressive this used to be overgrown a couple weeks ago <laughs> so that looks like the first queue house i'm over here by the jersey devil barbecue and i'm just putting the camera over the fence for a little bit so that's the first queue house i that appears to be the bathrooms where the center frame is and then i can sort of see if i back up a little the uh second queue house but it's back there i don't know if you can make out the second queue house there it's a uh, center frame just to the bottom behind that tree and right above that fence there it looks like it already has a roof on it so wow i'm amazed at the progress that they've made on this especially when it comes to the landscaping that first queue house was done like that and the second queue house looks like it's going to be done real soon right now the next order of business even though i'm right here in front of the Jersey Devil Barbecue, which is now open. I promised last time that I would go check out the Shrimp Cowboys or Boardwalk Cowboys, forgetting the name. We'll find out in a second. That opened as well. Haven't eaten there, and I promised I would go check it out. It's a busy day here at the Boardwalk, and I have found it. It is actually called the Boardwalk Cowboys. I just realized you can't really see it in there because of the light. But yeah, there it is. Let's go check out the menu and see what it's got going on. All right, look, taking a look here at the menu, they have jambalaya rice, which is a $2 upcharge from the meal plan or $15.99. Shrimp po'boy, Cajun chicken po'boy, gumbo with rice, fish and chips, and shrimp and chips. I've never heard of having shrimp and chips. They have beignets here and red beans and rice. Interesting. This sounds like a nice little new menu. I haven't seen many of these things being available at the park. But I think that I'm gonna start off with the shrimp po' boy and I'll work my way down the menu over time, but yeah, let's start off with the shrimp po' boy. I'm trying to find a quiet place here. I think four tenths is uh, good enough as any from all the speakers and everybody eating and hollering and stuff like that. But yeah, let's talk about the shrimp po' boy. It was, it was actually really good. I don't know if I caught them at the right time or what. And you know, the uh, fried shrimp just had come out or something like that, but that was, 
delicious and I would highly recommend it. The rice, on the other hand, was okay. It wasn't rubbery like a lot of rice can turn out to be when you get them um, at a theme park or something like that. Uh, it was, the texture was pretty good. It was just something about the taste was off. Maybe it was over seasoned or something like that, but it was heavy. So just be prepared for that. Meanwhile, even though it was fried shrimp, the po' boy itself was like really nice and light. Uh, and then the heavy rice, it was a weird combination. I don't know <laughs> where I'm going with this, but I'm just letting you guys know what to kind of expect. But I would still recommend the shrimp po uh, po' boy, for sure. Anyway, I think now is a good time to do, since it's kind of crowded and you guys like the, to know about the wait times, let's uh, rattle them off real quick. Q times, Batman the Ride, 90 minutes. Bizarro, 10 minutes, that doesn't sound right. Green Lantern, 35 minutes. That doesn't sound right. El Toro doesn't have a queue time listed. Huh, weird. But the heavy hitters here, Nitro, 70 minutes. The Joker, 100 minutes. Wonder Woman, Lasso of Truth, 100 minutes. Everything else is posted at a half hour or lower. But some of these, I don't think they update this app or something, because honestly, I walked by El Toro. They had a line. I walked by King Ka, they had a decent line. I don't know what to make of that, but there it is for all of you who always ask me what the wait times are. Next stop, we're here at Frontier Adventures because I heard that the Sawmill Log Flume is finally open. And <laughs> judging by that log going up the lift hill, it's true. see it in the app with a posted wait time, but I can see right across from here, all the switchbacks are actually open. So they're in use. There's a lot of people in this queue that would otherwise be at a different ride. Hopefully it's helping. Same with Hurricane Harbor. When I was coming in to the park, there was a lot of people <laughs> making that left turn into the Hurricane Harbor parking lot. So I assume that they're just, as the capacity expands, there's just more and more people coming into the park, which good for them, I guess, but bad for us if that means that some of these rides are gonna be at 100 minutes. So it looks like, now that I've been watching this for a little bit, um, they don't have like all the logs on there or something uh, on the loading platform, that turntable thing that they have going for this. But it's been fun. I was shooting a time lapse of the uh, logs and trying to count how much space there was in between. Definitely not the most optimal loading time. I've seen them where they had them just going, going, going. So another thing that as time goes on, the operations will pick up speed. The other thing worth noting is that Best of the West is finally open. It's reopened. Can you believe it? I am, I'm excited because it hasn't been open in like, I, didn't, I don't think it reopened all last season. And it usually closes early uh, in, in the 2019 season. So that means that for like the last 18 months, people have been without their Best of the West. How sad. Well, I decided to pay a quick visit to El Toro, which I had gone on earlier today, and as you can see, the line is like 70 minutes or more, so that app was definitely wrong. And apparently there's a Scooby-Doo advertisement going on right now. I don't know what that's about. El Toro District, no Lucerne, no Palsy, no Forrest, Keys, Wasps, Vast, Present, Prizes. They must be left in their locker with a non-artist. But yeah, I don't know why that app doesn't update constantly, because this would be good to know before everybody piles on. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear the sounds. I haven't given the seal lions much. Well, I almost said seals. These are sea lions. I'm waiting for one of them to surface, but I haven't shown them much love, so let's watch them for a little bit. Our sea lions. These are our California sea lions. This is Anoki and Dichali. Something really interesting about to happen is that we're actually going to do what we consider a water work session, which means that one of our trainers is actually going to get in the water with our beautiful girls. And then off to the right, 
is Alex with one of our beautiful girls, Dishali. Now, California sea lions are marine mammals, so that does mean they breathe oxygen just like us. So when they are underwater, they're holding their breath just like us. So they can hold their breath for up to 15 to 20 minutes. So they'll stay underwater just as long as they like. So getting in the water with our beautiful girl right now is Jackie. She is a longtime trainer here at Six Flags in the Wild Walkway. What happens with all of our animals in the training program is that we need to create a bond with them. We need a relationship with them in order for them to trust us and we can trust them. So we do work with our animals over a period of time in order for that trust to be created. <laughs> So with training, what we use is something called operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is just a training technique that allows us to work with our uh, sea lions. It, pra it practices the belief that um, when they do something they like, uh, we like, they get something they like. So in this case, that is fish. They are piscivore animals, so they eat fish all their life. It's their main diet. And with operant conditioning, it just lets us work with the animal in an awesome way, where they can trust us. If you've ever been here in the past, you might have seen one of our excellent shows uh, that we've had in the theater. Unfortunately, right now we're not having those shows, uh, but we are able to have these kind of situations where you guys can come and see one of our sessions, and it's a really good situation. Hopefully, in the future, we'll get session shows back up and start it again. That would be great. That does seem like my mic has decided not to work, so I'm just going to shout. If you have any questions, feel free to come on over. Now you'll see me do have one trainer in the water and one on the outside. That is just a good way to make sure that we are all staying safe. We consider our trainer, Rachel, who's on the outside of the water, a spotter. She's there to make sure that everyone is safe and make sure that both the sea lion and the trainer in the water is having a good time. <laughs> now obviously sea lions are an excellent swimmer. Uh, they can swim up to 12 miles an hour. They propel themselves through the water with their front flippers. You can see that they use. It helps them super fast move through the water. Kind of lets them glide on the water. They actually have a really cool ability where they will secrete an oil uh, through their skin and that kind of creates them to be a little bit waterproof, kind of in a way. Uh, but it also allows them to move through water super fast because the oil repels water and lets them pretty much just shoot through it. So like I said, in the water right now is Jackie. She's our trainer and she's working with Anoki. Anoki is about 15 years old and she is one of our two California sea lions. She was actually born at our sister park in California, Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. And she came here with her sister to Charlie when she was just about a year old. So like I said, obviously this takes a lot of trust. Obviously we trust our animal and our animal trusts us because this is her space, this is her area, and we are in it right now. Well, not me, but them. Um, so obviously our sea lions have to work with our trainers over a long period of time to make sure that they have this trust. Now with our training, we train them to do a lot of different behaviors. Those behaviors help them to exhibit some of their natural behaviors and some really cool ones as well. For instance, by being able to work so closely with our animals, it helps us deal with husbandry. Uh, so by working so closely with them, we can tell if something's wrong. We can come up close, feel on their skin, feel if something is not right. So that was cool seeing the seals. I didn't know that they did training sessions like that, but it's around um, 5, 5.30 just before they're actually bringing them inside. Don't know if they do them throughout the day. I probably should have asked, but 
Uh, I'll find out more information about that. I approached them about possibly doing something else or just being able to be in a location where I get a clear shot of the training and of the seals rather than behind that plexiglass which reflects the light like crazy. Uh, log flume, sawmill log flume. Very excited to see that open. The shrimp po' boy was really good. And then the seals. I haven't spent enough time around the, the animal walkway or the wild walkway to really take that in. But for now guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And I hope you go make your own adventure. Bye.